Good afternoon, students. Let's begin that same chapter that is resource and development. And it would be the fifth part of this chapter. Student, in the previous video, we have started soils and different features of uh, different soils and uh, the feature of different soils. And we have covered four types of soils. The first one is alluvial soil, which is uh, widely spread in all over India. And uh, on the base of age, we have divided this part, this soil into two parts, that is Bangar and Khadar. Right, friends, we have discussed about all the features of alluvial soil. Uh, this soil is fertile soil, and you can say that it supports agriculture. And about 40% uh, of our India, it is totally covered with alluvial soil. Second type soil, we have discussed about black soil and the feature of black soil, uh, which are found in India in the Deccan Trap. You can say in the Deccan Plateau of India. And this uh, uh, soil, it has another name also that is called Rigor soil. And this soil is beneficial for the cotton cultivation, right? Then we have discussed about red and yellow soil, where we have discussed about that uh, it is found in the low, low rainfall area uh, situation. And due to the iron content and due to the dehydration, uh, the color of this soil, it is, you can say that uh, red and yellow. And the last one, which we have discussed in the previous video, it was laterite soil. Uh, we have discussed about it, uh, that laterite soil, it has been taken, uh, this word has been taken from the lat uh, Latin word later, which means brick. And I have told you about this uh, soil that this soil is found in those areas where high temperature and heavy rainfall is there, where high temperature and heavy rainfall is there. Right, friends. This is very most important soil, but uh, due to uh, uh, due to intense leaching, means the leaching process is there, which was a type of soil erosion due to the water. So, due to intense leaching, that particular soil uh, you can say unfit for cultivation. But uh, with the proper irrigation facilities and with the prep, uh, proper uh, manure and HYV seeds, we can use it for the plantation cultivation. We have discussed all these things. Right from today's video lecture, what we are going to start, we have to start another two type of soil. And from uh, two types of soil, first of all, we will discuss about forest soil. Right, students? So, dear student, if we think about this forest soil, it is generally found on the top hills and you can say on the slopey area or you can say in the mountainic areas. And this mountain area, it is totally covered by the forest. That's why we have given this name as a forest soil. We can say it uh, as a mountain soil also. We can say it mountain soil also. So this type of soil, it is generally found on the, uh, on the hill slope area. And this is covered with the forest also, right? Dear student, uh, as you will know about it, the uh, physical feature of India, that uh, in the northern part of India, this is, uh, there is a Himalayan region. Means we have Himalayan mountain range. So the Himalayan mountain range, it, it is totally covered with the forest soil. Same thing, we have Western Ghat and Eastern Ghat. Uh, and some part of the peninsular uh, India, it has some also mountain. So this type of soil, it is totally found in the Himalayan area, Western and Eastern Ghat area. And you can say it about peninsular India. Or in, uh, this type of soil found in India, this thing, right? If we think about the main feature of this soil, the soil is loamy and silty in the valley side. You can say in the lower hills. But it had coarse grain whenever we have, uh, we will reach at the uh, hilly areas. Means, jaise hum kya karte hai? valley side mein jate hai, then this soil having, uh, you can say, loamy soil and fertile soil. But whenever we go, uh, go upper, uh, in the upper slope area, then the green, and you can see that uh, the articles and the particles of this soil, it, became, uh, it becomes uh, coarse. And due to this thing, the fertility is decreased there. Right? And second thing, the soil, it is very rich in humus also. It is very rich in humus, but it has something which is lack. Like you can say potash, phosphor, phosphorus, and lime also. The soil, it has a rich amount or a rich content of the humus also, but it has some lack, a lackness also. And there is a lack of potash, uh, phosphorus, and lime also. Right? And dear student, this soil is mostly, produce, uh, mostly suitable for the production of plantation crop. Plantation, it's a commercial crop. Whenever we'll, we will discuss about the agriculture chapter, we will come to know about the different type of uh, agriculture. 
where we will discuss about the plantation crop also this is a commercial crop in which only single crop is grown right students so the basic aim is as a commercial purpose to maximize the profit uh, so my dear student this forest soil it is maximum use for the plantation crop like tea coffee you have discussed uh, you have already know about the assam and you can see darjeeling these are the tea and coffee planting areas and these are the hilly areas and you can say forest soil is found in that particular area that's why that's why in these areas this plantation crop is grown here right so this is the forest soil right and we can see it as a mountain soil also okay now the last one uh, which is found in our india that is arid soil so dear student if you think about if you will go uh, in rajasthan and you will see that in that particular area there is a deserted area means you can see that in that particular area arid soil is found and this is found in the you can say arid and semi arid region we are less than 50 cm rainfall annually rainfall is there right so this soil is found only in those areas so the western as and you can say the western part of uh, india like rajasthan and uh, some part of gujarat also so this area it is uh, uh, the area where uh, 50 cm annually rainfall is there and you can say less than 50 cm rainfall so in this area this arid soil is found everything about the color of this soil it is red to brown right now my dear student everything about this soil this soil is a very less fertile soil you can say that because it has lack of humus and moisture also and uh, everything about the lower layer, uh, layer of the soil it is occupied by the kankar and reason is that because calcium content in this uh, downward situation of the soil the uh, calcium uh, uh, calcium content is more that's why the kankar is occupied the lower level of the soil and uh, the soil it is very less fertile and there are many reason the first reason is that because there is a lack of Mm, mm, rainfall also second thing humus content is no much so much not uh, in this uh, area and even kankar uh, 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 the kankar and you can say the uh, the calcium content it is found in that particular area that's why this soil it's, uh, it is not so fertile right if we think about in india uh, uh, in india the soil is mostly found in the rajasthan and some adjoining places of it like uh, uh, some part of haryana the part of haryana which is, which touch the border uh, of uh, rajasthan and the part of punjab which touch the border of rajasthan that particular area having this type of uh, soil also and if we think about Guj uh, kach of gujarat the extension of this soil it is uh, uh, found in that particular area it is uh, spread over there in the, these areas also so total near about uh, uh, rajasthan some part of haryana and punjab and you can say some part of uh, gujarat this soil uh, is found in these areas right and if we think about desert soil uh, it has uh, 90 to 95% sand and 5 to 10% clay so that's why we can say that uh, ki very low amount of vegetation can be found here if the vegetation is found here uh, it may be cactus it may be thorny bushes also right so this kind of uh, uh, vegetation is found in these areas right so this is arid soil so dear student we have discussed all the type of soils means six type of soils which we will have in uh, this chapter and we have already discussed all the features about it and where these soils are found in all over india so student you have the map regarding this soil all these soil also so you must be careful while regarding this uh, soil also because in exam and uh, the question will be asked in the you can say located method and you can say in the identification method that uh, which type of soil is found in which type of areas right so these are the soil but dear student in the beginning of this chapter i have already told you that our human being it is uh, it was always thought that by our human being that all the resources they are found in a very free zone and we must use uh, in uh, for our development so that's why in a very indiscriminate manner we are using these resources so i have told you that the pace of the formation of these resource and the conjunction pace it is totally different that's why ecological imbalance has been created in our uh, environment and we have faced a lot of environmental pro problem 
not uh, with india also it is having the problem with all over the world also all over the world facing this problem right friends so we are discussing about shale so it is also a natural resource and uh, after the green revolution we are using all the modern in uh, inputs so that the production can be increased so this uh, this is uh, due to this thing the soil has been you can say uh, the quality of the soil it has it is going to decline so to conserve our soil to conserve our soil we have to focus on this thing so before discussing about it first of all let's discuss about soil erosion simply the removal of the top soil it is called soil erosion it's a simple definition but if we think about the upper layer of the soil which is covered theek okay? hai this is washing down by the different agents like you can say human activities you can say that uh, by uh, by uh, water and other things so the removal of the top soil uh, it is called soil erosion right now dear student sometimes it is done by the running water also sometimes it is done by running water also and due to this thing it has deep cracks it has deep cracks and these deep crack, cracks are called gullies these deep deep cracks are gullies and you can say in the chambal basin these are known as a ravines also in chambal basin this type of gullies it is known as you can say that as a raven also this is the most important question for you because in board perspective it uh, this question is asked many times that in the chambal basin gully erosion was there but it has another name what was the name of it it's a raven it's a raven right students so my dear student whenever soil erosion is done so due to this thing the soil becomes unfertile and you can say it is unfit for the cultivation so that's why the land became becomes bad land and you can say sometimes barren land also which is not fit for the cultivation right students hope so this thing is clear to all of you so due to this thing our soil is going to be degraded again and again and you can see that and this uh, the basic reason of this degradation is also human activities means i have already told you that uh, uh, it has been uh, by the natural force also and by some human activities also so following are the factors which are responsible for the soil erosion and these are totally human activities you can say that uh, i have told you that uh, soil erosion it means the quality of the soil it is degraded but it is done by some human activities also what are the human activities uh, this uh, what are the human activities which are you can say responsible for this soil erosion first one is deforestation it means cutting of the trees cutting of the trees uh, in the beginning of the chapter i have told you that near about 33% area must be covered with forest so that ecological balance, balance uh, will be created but uh, my dear student population is going to be increase we required a lot of infrastructure activities and we required some residential areas and agriculture expansion uh, was there so due to this thing we are clearing and we are cutting this uh, forest so ecological imbalance has been created right second thing overgrazing we have discussed about this overgrazing also in rajasthan and in gujarat they, uh, these are the areas where overgrazing overgrazing this is the basic factor of the soil erosion and you can say of the so, uh, soil degradation right some construction activities also uh, whenever we do some construction activities so we required uh, that particular area so this constant, uh, construction activities these are also responsible for the soil erosion in 1960 we have green revolution so that's why we are using uh, modern inputs right during these modern inputs we have to use pesticides and chemical fertilizers because if we want to increase our production we required more pesticide and uh, more fertilizers then we can get more and more uh, you can say uh, uh, agriculture product but due to overuse of this chemical fertilizer it also declined the uh, you can say decline the fertility of that soil so the overuse of the chemical fertilizers and the modern inputs in the agriculture this is also the basic reason of the soil erosion also right so the uh, next one is the natural calamity uh, this natural calamity it is you can say flood and landslide these are the these are the natural cam uh, natural things and it can be done uh, uh, it can be done uh, in any any areas uh, we have seen that uh, in uh, during these day days in india 
in the eastern part eastern ghat area means eastern coastal area and you can say that that kerala part in the kerala part we uh, we are facing uh, you can say tsunami that tsunami it is a natural calamity and this is the also region of the soil erosion in that particular area right friends so human activities and some natural activities these both are responsible for the soil erosion so that's why the quality of soil it is going to be decreased but it is a very serious problem for us because we require agriculture product and the agriculture culture it is totally de uh, depend on the fertility of the uh, soil so we must conserve our soil right friends so we must conserve our soil so now we will discuss about the conservation of soil so dear student first of all let's discuss about the soil uh, soil conservation it means that protection preservation preservation and proper utilization of the soil it means uh, to uh, maintain the quality of soil this is called soil conservation the methods we, uh, which we are uh, adopting to protect our soil uh, for the, from the soil erosion and the quality uh, from the decline quality of the soil that methods are called soil conservation right so we will discuss about some methods uh, by which we can conserve our soil the first one is mulching my dear student these are not mentioned in your books also so you must be very careful while regarding this first question what uh, what is the mulching mulching it means the bare ground between the plants is covered with a layer of organic matters what are the organic matters these are straw these are straw straw so why we will do so why will do so uh, because these straw would help to retain the soil uh, as a moisture so that the soil can get the moisture to retain the moisture that's why this mulching process is done and it is done uh, when the bare ground uh, between the plants it is covered with the different organic matters now you can see the picture this picture tells you about the mulching what is mulching we have crops and uh, between the plants we have some bare ground and in that bare ground we have put uh, some layers of the organic matters like straw and this straw it is help uh, it is very helpful to retain soil as a moisture and to uh, retain the moisture for the soil right this is the mulching and this mulching is very helpful uh, to reduce the soil erosion and to reduce the uh, to reduce the you can say soil degradation right next one is contour barrier this is very most important thing so let's th think about what is contour barrier stones grass soils they are used to build barrier along the contours they uh, they are used to build barrier taki jo pani ki wajah se jo soil erosion hota hai na usko roka ja sake and we made some trenches trenches ka matlab kya sakte hai thode thode se khai khod dete hain uh, in front of these barriers so that uh, the water can be collected in these areas see this picture this is the contour barrier and this contour barrier it is very helpful to reduce the flow of the uh, water that's why the so uh, the water erosion it can be stopped it can be stopped right next one is rock dam rock dams means rocks are piled up to slow down the flow of water and this would help to prevent the gully erosion and you can say soil loss means humne dekha tha na humne discuss kiya tha ki gully erosion hota tha due to running water it uh, the soil is, uh, the ground has deep cracks deep cracks so these are the gullies so if we make some rocks rock dams uh, it slow down the flow of water and when the flow, uh, when the flow of water it is slowed down it means that this type of erosion it can be stopped see it this is the situation now you can see the see it the, that we have some rock dams right and these rock dams why we have uh, we have made this because the uh, the slow of the, the water the flow of the water it can be slowed down it can be slowed down in this way in this way uh, you can say that this uh, uh, in this way uh, we can say that the water erosion can be stopped right test terrace farming it is very most important thing and uh, this uh, this is mostly practiced in the hilly regions in the hilly regions and the hilly region it is totally uh, uh, you can say cut in a broad flat steps and you can say in a terrace and they are made to uh, uh, to reduce the flow of water to reduce the flow of water second thing these flats they are made up 
on the steep slope so that the flat surface surface they are available and so that we can grow the crops in those areas and this is also helpful to reduce the surface runoff it means this is also uh, this is uh, also helpful to reduce the uh, to reduce the flow of water and in this way the soil erosion can be stopped and you can say can be reduced see the picture and mostly this thing is baptized in you can say that in the hilly regions and in the mountainic areas whenever you will go in the mountainic areas in the mountain areas you will find uh, you will find this type of uh, cropping pattern and you can say this type of uh, farming methods in this in the, these areas because steep slope is there so that's why flat steps they are uh, made up on these areas and crops can be grown in those areas second thing this would uh, this would reduce the surface runoff means the flow of water and soil erosion can be stopped in these areas right hope so this thing is clear next one is contour plowing it is very most important if we think about plowing parallel to the contours of a hill slope to form a natural barrier for the water so that the flow of the water it can be down so that's why called the uh, contour plowing you can see this thing we have some contour and you can say we have some trenches and in these trenches we put water so that the you can say that the uh, you can say that the soil erosion it can be reduced this is the contour plowing right intercropping method this is very most important different crops are grown in alternative rows different crops are grown in the alternative rows rows and they are sown at a different time to protect the soil to protect the soil from the water erosion see it we have different crops in different uh, rows having different crops so that the uh, the flow of the water it can be st uh, stopped and the soil erosion can be stopped and can be reduced right shelter belts mostly it is done in the dry areas and in the coastal areas their rows of the trees they are planted uh, you can say uh, at the border of the uh, uh, field so that the wind movement can be checked can be uh, reduced and if the wind movement can be reduced then it protect the soil cover it pro uh, you can say it uh, protect our soil and it reduce the soil erosion shelter belt and you are well aware about this situation also and mostly this type of uh, a method it is adopted in the coastal areas in the dry uh, in the regions where rows of the trees these are planted to check the wind movement so that the soil cover uh, will uh, would be protected and in this manner we can stop the uh, soil erosion in the coastal areas and you can say in the dry regions right these are the important methods now let's discuss about some another uh, methods uh, which are used to soil conservation like first of all uh, afforestation इट मीन प्लांटिंग ऑफ द ट्रीज क्योंकि हमें पता है कि जो पेड़ों की जड़े होती हैं रूट्स ऑफ द ट्रीज दे ऑल्सो यू कैन से वो हमेशा क्या करती हैं वो हमेशा मिट्टी को पकड़ के रखती हैं इसे क्या कहते हैं इसे इसके माध्यम से सोइल इरोजन कैन बी रिड्यूस्ड सो एफोरेस्टेशन इट इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट नेक्स्ट वन इज क्रोप रोटेशन नेक्स्ट यू कैन से दैट कंट्रोल ओवर द डिफोरेस्टेशन एंड ओवर ग्रेजिंग these are some other methods we, uh, uh, which we can use to conserve our soil and soil erosion can be reduced right students so dear student the chapter is totally over hope so everything is clear to all of you so i'll see you in the next video thank you have a nice day